Dear students, in today's lecture, we will discuss the most important concept of unit theory, rather we can say the important topic of the fuzzy set theory and it is the relations. Before discussing something related to the fuzzy relations, I will give you the brief about the classical relations so that you can have a clear idea of how relations work and how we can use the simpler kind of properties and functionality by making the concept of the fuzzy relations. Friends, now the first question arises why we are going to study the relations. So, see here as and when we require to establish uh, some kind of relationship between the different objects. So, the ultimate objective of uh, making the relationship is the backbone of the decision making. So, it means whenever we will be dealing with the decision making and the inference making capability of the fuzzy concept theory, then relationship will be very, very, very important. So, as I also mentioned here, that uh, the decision making, the basic concept of the decision making depends upon the relationship among the different objects. So friends, now I am just doing, I am just giving you the glimpse of the uh, classical relations. So as you know that, uh, so say for example, we are having one uh, classical set and we want to establish its relationship among one another classical set. So that relationship is an ordered pair of elements from first set to the another set. And here one thing which is very very much important is that the first set is available in the first universe of discourse and the another set is available in the another set of universe of discourse, another universe of discourse. That means we are making, we are simply making a relationship among the two different uh, universal sets. Here set, say for example, we are having set A and set B and we want to make a relationship among the elements of set A with the elements of set B. Here the set A is available in the one universe of discourse and set B is available in another universe of discourse. And then we are trying to make a relationship among these two sets. Right. Now that relationship, it will be the ordered pair of elements from first set to the another set. So in crisp relationship, either there will be a relationship among one element of first set with the another element of uh, uh, second set or there will not be any relationship at all among the elements. So there is only two things, either yes or no, whether one element from set 1, whether an element from set 1 is having a relationship among some specific element of set B, uh, set 2 or no connection is there. So first of all here we are studying the classical relationship and then we can say that the uh, fuzzy relationship is just like a generalization of the relations over the classical relations. We can say here the fuzzy binary relation are the generalization of the crisp binary relations. Right? We will study later on. So, say for example, say, suppose we are having more than one, uh, one sets. Rather we can say, say for example, we are having more than one objects. So, in that scenario also, we would be able to establish a kind of relationship among the different objects, among the different sets. So, suppose we are having three, uh, three sets and we are making a relationship among them. So, that relation is known as a ternary relation. Suppose we are having four objects, we are having four sets and uh, we want to establish a relationship among the elements of all those sets that that type of relation is known as a quaternary relation. Similarly, binary relation is also there and the most important relation is when we are having two sets in two different uh, universe of uh, discourse and if we make a relationship among them, that type of relation is known as the binary relation, binary crisp relation, crisp binary relation, whatever you want to say, crisp binary relation or binary crisp relation. So 
uh, in the context to solve variety of problem first of all we will study the concept of the binary relationships now let us start discussing something with the relation suppose we are having to the universe of discourse and say they are x capital x and capital y there is a close relationship among binary relations and the cartesian product so i am just telling you the concept of the cartesian product suppose we are having two universe of discourse one is capital x and another is capital y then the cartesian product among x and y which is represented by x cross y is a set of ordered pair of element such that x comma y where small x it belongs to the universe first universe of discourse and small y belongs to second universe of discourse so here the cartesian product form an ordered pair of every x and every y so in the cartesian product we are saying that every element from first universe is having a relationship with every element of uh, second universe of discourse now here is one very important uh, thing that is the characteristic function so here characteristic function is generally represented just like a symbol which is similar to lambda so it's a symbol which is representing the characteristic function it is it is being represented by a symbol which is similar to lambda so we can say the characteristic function denoted by lambda gives the strength of relationship between the ordered pair of element of first the universe with the element of second universe right say for example now once we have established a cartesian product among the two universes and now we are supposed to make a kind of relation so that relationship that binary relation can be achieved with the help of the cartesian product so that is specific relation which gives us the information that some of the specific element from first domain are connected with some specific element of another uh, universe so that makes a relation so that relation is a subset of the cartesian product so here the characteristic function is the uh, whole soul person who will make the uh, who will make the relation among the two sets so this cartesian uh, say so this characteristic function which is represented by lambda so this is a characteristic function and it is working on x cross y so either its value will be 1 or it will have 0 so it means what does it say it says that some of the element from first domain from first universe are connected with some of the elements of the other uh, other uh, universe and some are not connected those who are not connected its their characteristic value is given as zero and those who are connected their characteristic value is represented as one so it represents the it, this characteristic function uh, it makes the relations it makes a relationship between uh first universe of discourse to the second universe of discourse so when universe of sets are finite then the relation is represented by a matrix called relation so here the role of matrix comes as generally we often say with our student that matrix is very important in mathematical calculation first of all all the different kind of data can be represented in uh, matrix and if we want to make the relationship from one object to another object so that kind of relationship is also represented with the help of matrix so lot of mathematical operations can be performed with the help of matrix that's why in computer science and engineering matrix uh, functionality is very important so i'm saying that a relationship relationship among two object it is represented by a matrix itself right and r dimensional relation matrix represents r ray relation and two dimensional matrix will represent the binary relation so here i am showing you with an example so 
I'm showing you an example. Say for example, you are having uh, you are having two sets. One set is capital X, which is PQR. Another set is capital Y, which contains three elements, two, four, six. The Cartesian product of these two sets will be represented with the help of X cross Y, that will have the relationship among all elements of X with all elements of Y. So here, I'm making a relationship. This is a ordered pair P with two, P with four, P with six. It means here P is having a relationship with all the elements available in the second set. In the similar way, Q is having the relationship with all the elements of the second set and R also is having the relationship. So that becomes the Cartesian product of these two sets. Now, so if for example, we are having a relation, binary relation from these two sets and in this relation, P is having relationship with 2, Q is having a relationship with 4, R is having relationship with 4 and R is also having one relationship with 6. So it's a specific uh, ordered pair. So here, what R is having? R is having some specific ordered pair from the Cartesian products. R itself is a subset of the Cartesian product and it contains some specific ordered pairs from the Cartesian product which, which are connected to each other. So it represents a relation. Right. So in the matrix form, how we can represent this relation? The first the first the element of the first set are represented in this way and the element of the another set are represented in this way on column wise another the row wise like i am writing here 2 4 6 they are the element of the uh, a set and pqr they are the element of the another set we will write them like this and the elements which are having a relation to each other they will be marked by one and the elements which are not related to each other they will have the value zero that is why we are saying it's a classical relationship or the crisp relationship here the relationship uh, we are not having the uh, relationship of all the elements with all the other elements some specific element of first set are having relationship with another some elements of the another set so here is here is only two things either there is a relationship or there is no relationship so that's why here we see that P is having relationship with 2. So P and 2, here the value is 1. Then P is not having any relationship with 4. P is not having any relationship with 6. So that's why we write here 0 and 0. Similarly, Q is having relationship with only 4. So that's why Q and 4, we are having 1 here. And rest 2 positions, we are having 0. And then we see that R is having relationship with 4 and 6. So that's why we mentioned here 1 and 1 and with R2 there is no relationship we mentioned here. So this is the matrix form to represent the binary relationship among the classical sets. So there is one another style to represent the binary relationship in classical set and that is the coordinate diagram. Here on one axis we make the elements available of first set, on, on y axis we make uh, we make the elements, we put the elements of the another set and and uh, that in this in the form of this grid we will mark all those checkpoints with bullets which are having some kind of the relationship like P is having connection with 2 so that has been good. Q is having relationship with 4 so that cross that crossover point has been marked as gold. R is having a relationship with 4 and 6 so that cross points crossover points are marked with bullets. So it's a way it's a coordinate diagram to represent a binary relationship with classical sets. So it is uh, we are coming to the mapping representation I'm showing you with a with a diagram here we are having two sets, set X and set Y and uh, I make a relationship of P element with 2, Q element with 4 and the relationship of R with 4 and 6. This type of representation is known as the mapping representation. Right. So, 
Now, let's come upon the cardinality of the classical relations. The cardinality of a relation is represented like this. Say for example, in relation we are having two sets, one is set X and another is set Y and the number of elements in set X is NX and the number of elements in set Y is B and Y. Then the cardinality of the relation X cross Y will be NX into NY. Suppose three elements were there in P, uh, P set and uh, three elements were there in Q set then the cardinality of the relation P cross Q will be 9. Now, come on the composition of, of classical relations. This is very important. This is rather, I am saying this is extremely important. Once we will be having the idea about the composition of the relations, binary relations, crisp relations, then we can have a, we can have, uh, we can easily understand the composition of the, of the fuzzy relations. Composition means, say for example, we are having two relations. I am telling you in terms of, in the context of the classical sets. Suppose we are having you know, some classical some sets. We are having some set, and let's say these sets are x, y, and z. They are the classical sets, and uh, with classical set x and y, we make a relation, and say that relation is R relation. So R is a binary crisp relation among x and y. And in a similar way, we make a binary crisp relation S with the set Y and Z. So we say that generally R and S can be compatible. R and S can be compatible. Compatible means uh, when we would be able to would be able to uh, compose a final relationship from from x to z so what is happening here say for example we are having three in this scenario say, uh, consider that we are having three relations relation x relation y relation z they all belong to the different universal sets now suppose we make a relation relation r which establish a relation crisp relation from elements of x set with the elements of y set and similarly Anyhow, if we are able to uh, make a relationship, crisp relationship among uh, crisp set Y and Z and say that relation is represented by S. So, now here what we can do, we can compose the relation R and S. And if we are able to do so, it means that these two relations were compatible to each other. Right. So, with the help of the composition, what we will be doing, we will be getting a relationship from X, from the element of X set with the element of Z set. So, let us come here. So, here the operation executed on two compatible binary relations. To get a single binary relation is called the composition. It's, it's a definition. But the basic purpose, what we are doing here, with the help of two binary relations, we are getting a single one binary relation. So here, say for example, x, y, z were three relations. We are having a, re, uh, sorry, x, y, z were three sets and we are having a relation R and relation S. R was a relation from x to y, S was a relation from y to z. So with the help of these two binary relations, R and S, we would be getting a single one relation and that relation can be uh, termed as T and uh, it will make a relationship among the element of first set X set with the elements of the Z set. So that is known as the composition of the different relations and it is only possible when we are having the compatible relations. Right? This composition can be done in two ways. One is the max min composition, another is the max product composition. In most of the cases, uh, we will be using max min composition, right? So here, I'm just telling you again with the with the uh, with the uh, vocation like this. Say, R is a relationship. R is a relationship which we have drawn from the subset uh, from the set of Cartesian product of x and y. 
we make the cartesian product of uh, x and y and from this cartesian product we draw a relationship so r is a relation r is a crisp relation we achieved it from the cartesian product x form and s is again a binary relation among y and z and here we achieved it with the help of the cartesian product of y and z right now here you can see that with the help of relation r and s we are making to establish a relation t which will help us to connect the element from x to element of z let us take an example for better clarity suppose we are having a set x set y and set z set a is having three elements set y is having three elements set z is having three elements for the sake of simplicity i have taken that uh, there are three element a1 a2 a3 in set x b1 b2 b3 in set y c1 c2 c3 are the element of set z so here there is a relationship from x to y and that relationship we have drawn it from the cartesian product of x cross y similarly we are saying that there is again some relationship from y to z and that relationship we have drawn we have drawn uh, this relationship from its specific characteristic function and that characteristic function gets value from the cartesian product of y comma z so here we are seeing that how r can be represented r is a relation from x to y and s is a relation from y to z so here you can say we write down the element of first set here and we write down the element of second set here and we will mark one where the relationship exists and on the rest of the places we will mark zero similarly for s relations we will have, first of all we will put down the element b1 b2 b3 here and the element of the next uh, set like this even c2 c3 here and with the crossover points like here we are writing one it means there is a relationship from b1 to c1 see here there is a relationship from b1 to c1 that's why i am writing here one there is no relationship from b1 to c2 or b1 to c3 that's why i am writing here b1 b1 it's a way to represent the binary relations uh with classical sets so our objective is that if we want to establish a relationship among the elements of the first set with the elements of the third set so that job has been done with the help of the composition of relations and this composition can be done either with the help of max min composition or max product composition right so here the composition function is represented by a symbol t and we mark it r bullet s see here what is happening here in this composition we are having a relationship from a1 to c1 a1 to c3 a2 to a2 to c3 and a3 to c2 i am just showing you how it is you can see here with the two matrix of the relations you can very well see here that there is a relationship from a1 to b1 and there is a relationship from a1 to b2 also so anyhow if a1 if b1 is having a relationship with c1 so we can conclude that a1 is also having a relationship with c1 so that's why we are writing here a1 c1 is having a relationship right now we want to we want to work for a1 c2 a1 c2 so how it works so is there any way from a1 we can move to b1 or from b1 is there any way to move to c2 no there is no way from a1 we cannot move to b3 right so we leave that one from a1 we can move to b1 and from b1 to c2 there is no relationship that's why we are writing here there is no way a1 is not connected to c2 now come with a1 c1 we want to establish a relationship among a1 and c1 so how we can move from a1 to c1 so from a1 we can move to b1 or now here check from b1 whether we are able to go to c3 no 
from a2 whether we, from b2 whether we are able to go to c3 yes see here what is happening there is a relationship from a1 to b2 and there is a relationship from b2 to c3 that means we can say with the help of the transitivity rule of the transitivity that there should be a relationship from a1 to c3 so that's why we are writing here a1 to c3 there is one right similarly now we are interested to find the relationship from a2 to c1 a2 to c1 so from a2 we can only move to b2 now we have to check whether from b2 can we come on c1 from b2 can we come on c1 no there is no way so that's why we are writing here c1 so with the help of the matrix operations we can find out the composition of the relations and that composition can be achieved with the help of the max min composition or with the help of the max product composition so the way i am showing you the is there any kind of connection from some element of uh, first universe of this curve with some element of the last universe of this curve so that can be done with the help of the and operation that can be done with the and operation so here the other we can say we can operate we can get the uh, value of and with the help of the product product operation right so the maximum composition is defined by the function theoristic at the expression as t is equal to r o s where the characteristic function of the composition composed matrix what is t t is the final relationship t is the final relationship which we are uh, which we want to uh, establish so its characteristic function will will try to have a relationship from x and z so the characteristic function of t which will make the connection from x to z so what it will uh, give it will provide the it will get its value from the characteristic function x y multiply the characteristic function of y z and will take for each value of y for each different possible value of y we will find all these value and that information we will put here right now comes the uh, most important thing of the lecture that is the fuzzy relations so we can say that uh, fuzzy relation is is the generalized way of uh, dealing with the crisp relationship here is one universal and very basic uh, conceptual fact and that fact says that every element of one universe is connected to every element of another uh, another universe or they are not connected so there is a universal fact it according to this fact it says that all the elements are having some kind of relationship with other elements up to some extent up to some extent so the statement says that the element from one set are having some kind of relationship up to some extent with the element of the another set or they not we they not having any kind of the relationship there should not be any kind of the relationship there are there are only two things either they are connected to some extent or there is no relationship so this is the universal fact which works in the background of the fuzzy relationship so it means here what we are saying suppose we are having one fuzzy set in one uh, universal in uh, universe of discourse and another fuzzy set in another universe of discourse so here all the elements from uh, these two set will be connected to each other and the degree of connection degree of relationship it will be ranging from 0 to 1 like we discussed that the membership value of the elements in the fuzzy set it may ranges it may range from 0 to 1 in a similar way i'm saying that uh, uh, if uh, we are trying to establish a relationship fuzzy relationship among two sets which are working in two universal domains two uh, two universe of discourse then every element must have some kind of connection with all the elements of the other domain or there would not be any kind of the relationship so in the in in, in second statement the membership uh, the value of the membership in the relation will be zero and in rest of the scenario when we are saying that all elements are connected with all elements up to some extent in that scenario the degree of membership in the relation will be 
ranging from 0 to 1 right so now coming to the fuzzy relations so it works uh, is based on the concept that all elements of one universe are related to all element of the another universe up to some extent or they are not related to each other that's it there can be only two things either they are connect they are having some kind of the connection they are having some degree of the connection some degree of the relationship with the other elements of the uh, other universe or there is no relationship so let us take one universe say it is x and another universe say it is y so let a be the fuzzy set in x and b is a fuzzy set on universe y then the cartesian product of a and b can be represented as it is mu r x y it will be mu a cross b x y now the membership value which we are trying to get in the relationship this will be the minimum value of the membership function see i'm what i'm talking i'm making a relationship among x and y x is an element of first fuzzy set a y is a element of another fuzzy set say it is b these two fuzzy sets are in different domains now i want to establish relationship between x and y so there should be some value some membership value i know that this ordered pair must be there in the in the fuzzy relation this ordered pair must be there in the fuzzy relation but this ordered pair would have some membership value ranging from 0 to 1 if this value is 0 so it means we can say there is no relationship among x and y but if there is some value so we can say that the relationship among x and y is that specific value so this membership value can be represented as mu a cross b x y what is this a cross b this is the cartesian product of a and b and how we will get this membership value this will be the minimum value of mu x or mu b y y is available in b fuzzy set x is available in a fuzzy set there are two fuzzy sets there are two domains there are two universe x x is a set capital x is a set uh, sorry a capital a is a fuzzy set here a small x is an element which belong to a set capital uh, b is a fuzzy set another fuzzy set and y is an element which belong to another fuzzy set by making a connection between these two elements first of all we have to find out the degree of association degree of relationship among these two uh, elements right and that degree we can get it from the minimum function so minimum of mu x or mu b y now let us do with an example say for example say for example we are having two fuzzy sets one is fuzzy set a another is fuzzy set b and certainly they are in two different universe of discourse so that's why because they are having uh, they are working on two separate universe of discourse that is why it is having elements x1 x2 x3 and uh, fuzzy set b is having two elements y1 and y2 the membership value of x1 is 0.2 x2 is 0.7 and x3 is 0.4 and the membership value of y1 is 0.5 and y2 is 0.6 now when we make the cartesian product when we make the relationship of these two fuzzy sets so what is this this is a fuzzy cartesian product it is a relation it is a relation fuzzy relation so how we are making this this will have the concept that every element of a will have the relationship with the element of uh, with every element of fuzzy set b so see here i'm saying that there is an ordered pair x1 y1 there should be an ordered pair x1 y2 another ordered pair x2 y1 x2 y2 another ordered pair x3 y1 x3 y2 it means all element of set a are connected with all elements of set b this is the concept of the fuzzy relation but with with what degree they are connected to each other so that degree is represented with the help of the membership value where see the ordered pair of x1 y1 so the ordered pair of x1 y1 will have the 
a membership value which is the minimum from this one and this one so check here point 2 and point 5 which one is minimum point 2 is minimum so the ordered pair x1 y1 will have the membership value point 2 so see here x1 y1 will have the membership value point 2 now check another ordered pair that is x1 y2 so again that will also have, have some kind of the relationship here the relationship from x1 and y2 will be represented by the ordered pair x1 y2 and its membership value will again be 0.2 because 0.2 is lesser than 0.6 now for x2 y1 the membership value will be 0.5 for x2 y2 membership uh, membership value will be 0.6 for x3 y1 membership value will be 0.4 for x3 y2 membership value will be 0.4 right I think uh, in this uh, lecture, I have discussed with you something uh, which was very interesting and very important also and uh, that is the relationship first we uh, make the concept from the crisp relation, crisp uh, ternary relations could be there, crisp uh, quaternary relation, quaternary relation, binary relations can be there and similarly in the same way we, are, we may have R relations in the fuzzy side and here we make the concept clear with the help of the binary uh, fuzzy relations okay so that's all of this lecture in the next lecture we will discuss some operations on the fuzzy relations right thank you very much